Hi, I'm Vin Morialli from Boris FX, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to quickly remove unwanted logos and lavalier mics in production footage. The process is actually pretty easy, and there are a couple of tools at our disposal to make quick work out of it. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Mocha Pro plugin for After Effects. Now there are a number of ways to remove an object or logo from your scene. The first, and most preferable of course, being don't have the object or logo in your shot to begin with. But often on low budget productions we either don't have the time to make the correction or maybe it was something we just didn't notice. Now when I was filming this scene for the series Staying in Boston I didn't have a lot of time to work with. I only had a couple of hours to shoot a scene at a dojo before I had to shoot another scene at a stable before I lost the sun. There were child actors, animals, basically a lot of variables at play and not a lot of time. So when my actor here showed up wearing a Nike logo on his shirt I couldn't send him off to change and I didn't want to have to have him flip his shirt inside out. Fortunately, Mocha Pro made fixing this pretty easy. To begin with, I've assembled my scene in Premiere, and I've separated out each of the shots where Fletcher's shirt can be seen. Now, I prefer to cut everything together in Premiere, and then bring the individual shots into a linked After Effects comp. That way, if I need to make any changes, I can quickly go in and make those changes, and see it update immediately in my timeline. Now, once I have my clip set up in After Effects, I'm going to go to my Effects and Presets, and apply Mocha Pro. From there, I can launch the Mocha user interface. Now in order to do a remove, it's important to remember two things. The first is, I need to have the licensed version of Mocha Pro in order to access the remove module. Mocha AE, which is included with After Effects, and Mocha Pixel Chooser, which is available in Continuum and Sapphire filters, do not have the ability to remove images. Secondly, when doing a remove, I need to track two things. The object I want to remove, in this case the Nike Swish, and the area that I want to insert my replacement, my actor's shirt. Now the first thing I want to do is make sure that I'm only selecting my swish. To make this easier, I'm going to hold down the Z button and drag upwards to zoom in on my object. Holding X will allow me to move the image with the hand tool so I can reposition it to my liking. Okay, that looks good. I can clearly see the swish, but it's pretty close to the text, so I'm going to want to be careful not to accidentally cut off the edge of my text. With my spline tool selected, I'm going to draw a quick mask around the logo and adjust it as necessary. Now in this shot, my actor is pretty straight on with the camera, but regardless, I always want to make sure that Mocha is tracking the right thing. Mocha is a planner tracker, meaning it tracks a group of pixels. To make sure it tracks the right group of pixels, I want to align my surface tool. Now the surface tool, as its name implies, allows me to visualize the surface that Mocha is tracking. I can enable a handy grid here, and the surface tool here. By adjusting the surface tool, I can align my grid to the object's surface. If the surface and grid slip off in a strange direction, I'll know that I need to select a better area to track. Once that's done, I can track forward to track the object's movement in my scene. When it finishes, I can turn off my grid and play it back. That's looking pretty good, and it's a pretty solid track. Now, as I mentioned before, when doing a remove, I'm going to be tracking two things, the object I want to remove and the background. Since I'm going to be dealing with multiple splines, I just want to keep things organized, so I'm going to rename this layer Swish. Okay, now that I've told Mocha what I want to remove, I have to tell Mocha where this remove is supposed to go. To do that, I'm going to create a new spline shape around the area where the remove is going. It can be any shape or size, so long as it contains my swish track. Remember, all this track needs to do is tell Mocha, hey, this is the general area where you should be looking. Before I forget, I'm going to rename this track Background. Now here's the thing. If I play this back, the new spline has no motion tracking. Now I could tell Mocha to track it, but here's a much quicker solution. With my background track selected, I'm going to go to my layer properties, and here where it says a link to track, I'm just going to select Swish. And now my background track has inherited all the tracking data from my original track. Okay, now that Mocha knows which object is being removed and where the replacement needs to go, there are two final things I need to do before I move on to the remove module. First, track order is very important. Mocha reads from the top down, so the object that I want to remove needs to be above my background track. Next, with the swish selected, I want to feather the edges a little bit. This is going to ensure that whatever I replace my swish with blends nicely without any hard edges. Now I can do this by slightly increasing the edge width and hitting set. Notice how when I do this I can see the spline edge change. One thing to remember is that my background spline should never intersect the remove layer. I'm going to want to play through my timeline and make any necessary adjustments to make sure I don't cross the streams. Not only would that be bad, I'll get really weird results. 
With that done, I'm going to head on to the Remove module. Now here I have a few options that will vary depending upon what kind of remove I'm doing. On the left, I have access to my input clips. This is where I'm going to create and select a clean plate, basically the new image that will replace my Swish logo. The search range is where I can tell Mocha to look ahead for background data. This is really useful when I have an object moving across the scene that I want removed. It allows Mocha to anticipate what the background looks like over time and use that as a replacement. But for this tutorial, I can pretty much ignore it since I'm going to be working exclusively with clean plates. Illumination model and this section here will interpolate the lighting in the scene so that a remove matches the overall look. For my remove, I can leave all of these at default. Okay, so with my switch layer selected, I'm going to select Create to create a new clean plate. What this does is create a TIFF image snapshot of whatever frame the CTI is parked on. So in this instance, it will be the first frame. Feel free to move the CTI to any frame that gives you a good, clean shot of your object. Now I'm going to save this TIFF to my desktop or somewhere easy to find, and then launch Adobe Photoshop. And what I want to do is essentially paint out the swish. So to do that, all I need to do is take the clone stamp tool and paint it out. Now I typically zoom in until I start to see the individual pixels. This is going to give me more control as I paint out my swish. Note that I don't have to get it perfect but I do want to make sure that I don't have any obviously repeating patterns. The idea is to get it as reasonably close to the original without drawing attention to the fix. When I'm done, I'm going to hit save and head back to Mocha. Now I want to use my clean plate exclusively, so I'm going to check this box here and then go up and render the frame. And there we go. Now if I toggle off the overlays, I can see that looks pretty seamless. By clicking the Render Forward button, Mocha will interpolate my clean plate across the entire clip. But remember, if you chose a frame from elsewhere in your timeline, don't forget to also render back so you don't miss any frames. And there you go. If I zoom out, it's looking pretty seamless. When I'm satisfied, I can close out of Mocha and save. Now in order to render the effect in After Effects, I'm going to need to enable the Module Renderer. I'll select Remove from the drop-down and enable Render. And there we go. Now one thing to remember is how Mocha will interact with other plugins. Let's say I wanted to adjust the contrast or the brightness. Any effect I add needs to be below Mocha in the stack. So for example, if I add a basic brightness contrast filter and I bring that down, I get the result that I'm expecting. But if Mocha is at the bottom of the stack, the filter doesn't render. This is because the Mocha mask is blocking it. Something to keep in mind if you have multiple effects already stacked when you bring your clip over from Premiere, or if you're doing additional color grading. Now these steps are identical regardless of what I need to remove, provided that I'm using clean plates. So for example, in this clip, you can see that my lead actress is wearing a lavalier mic. Obviously, that's not something I want in my finished product. As before, I can track the movement of the mic in Mocha, as well as her shirt. By creating a clean plate, I can then bring the frame into Photoshop and paint out the mic. The difference here is that unlike with the swish, my actress moves in such a way that there's a significant change in the lighting as she moves into a bit more shadow. This can be problematic since the remove is based off a single frame and that frame doesn't change. If it's too light or dark, it'll become extremely noticeable when the background changes. Now there are a couple ways to finesse this. The first is by changing my lighting options to linear or interpolate. This allows Mocha to guess the lighting based on a previous frame. As I mentioned before, these options are typically used for removals without a clean plate. This is when Mocha is scanning ahead to insert a background. However, for subtle changes in lighting, they can be very helpful. Another option, and one that I used here, is actually to simply break the clip into two separate shots around the point where she moves into shadow. This way, I can use a separate clean plate for when she's in the light and when she's in the shadow. Regardless, when I'm done with this, I'm going to save my After Effects project and it'll automatically update in the Premiere timeline. The great thing is that if I'm working with multiple shots, they're all stored in the same After Effects project. If I'm re-watching my footage and spot an issue, I can always jump right back into that project and make quick adjustments. And that's all there is to it. If you'd like to see the completed scene from Staying in Boston, check out the link below. I'm Vin Morreale with Boris Effects, and for more great tutorials, don't forget to check out the Boris Effects website. Take care!